Hello and welcome to Really Big Hat. I'm Jared, and this is D&D Quick Builds, where we build D&D characters quickly. Today we're building the Shadow Cat, a feline master of darkness. Because let's be honest, we've all wanted to be a cat ninja at one point or another. So, let's get started. Our character, of course, is named Shadow Cat. And as for optional features here, we are going to select the optional class features and customizing our origin. For our race, we are going with a tabaxi. That gets us dark vision, feline agility, cat's claws, and cat's talent. We are going to want to go over into our origin manager and click the ability score increase option. And we're going to keep the dex at two, but change the charisma to wisdom. For our class, we are going to be going with a monk. That gets us unarmored defense, martial arts, and a few proficiencies. We are going to go into optional feature manager and just go ahead and click all of these on. This is, of course, optional if you don't want to do it, but for a class later on, it is going to be darn near mandatory. For our ability scores, I am once again going with a point buy. We're going to go ahead and bring strength up to 10, dex up to 14, con up to 14, Leave Intelligence at 8, bring Wisdom up to 15, and Charisma up to 10. With our abilities from our Racial Selection, our Dexterity, and our Wisdom both come up to 16. For our background, I've gone with Folk Hero. That gets you proficiencies in Animal Handling, Survival, Land Vehicles, and a tool of your choice. This is, of course, completely up to you, and I've just filled it out just to fill it out, basically. Go with whatever you want here. For our starting equipment, we are going to be selecting equipment. We're going to pick up a quarter staff, an explorer's pack, take the 10 darts, and then whatever you get from your background of choice. And so here's a look at our character sheet at level 1. 10 HP, 16 armor class, and with our quarter staff, we can do a D8 plus 3, and then a D4 plus 3 with our martial arts as a bonus action. So that's actually not bad as a monk at level 1. So, jumping ahead to level 3 of Monk, that is where we pick up our monastic tradition, and we are, of course, taking the way of Shadow. That gets us the Shadow Arts ability, which means that we can use two key points to replicate the Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without Trace, or Silence spells without needing material components. And we also get the Minor Illusion Cantrip. Very solid ability all around. Those are all very good spells and well worth the two key points to cast. Moving right along to 5th level of Monk, we get a lot of features along the way. At 4th level, we get Quickened Healing, an Ability Score Improvement. I recommend getting your Dexterity bumped up here. We also get Slow Fall at level 4, which is a pretty nifty ability. At level 5, we get Focused Aim, Extra Attack, and Stunning Strike. At level 6, we get several features here as well. We get... Key Empowered Strikes, making our unarmed attacks count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance. We get an unarmored movement buff to 15 feet, making our unarmored movement speed 45 now. And we also get the Shadow Step ability, which means that we're in an area of dim light or darkness. We can use a bonus action to teleport up to 60 feet to another area of dim light or darkness. And then we have advantage on the first melee attack we make before the end of that turn. Very, very cool ability, and part of the crux of this build. From here, we are going to multi-class into Ranger. We're going to go ahead and pick up three levels of Ranger right off the bat. And before we do anything else, we want to come into the optional feature manager here and select Deft Explorer, Favored Foe, and Primal Awareness to replace Natural Explorer, Favored Enemy, and Prime Evil Awareness. So, on our way to level three of Ranger, we also pick up a bunch of abilities along the way. First, we have our Deft Explorer feature. We get two languages and a skill expertise. I've taken Draconic and Orc. This really doesn't matter. I just grab two at random and you can do the same or, you know, pick something campaign dependent. You would know this a lot better than me. But I do think that stealth is what you should take expertise in since that is kind of our whole bag. Uh, we also pick up Favored Foe. We get additional Ranger spells. And we pick up a fighting style, and I've taken blind fighting. Really, you've got any number of options here. You could take archery, you could take dueling, you could take throne or two-weapon fighting if you want to use those fighting styles. 
Or you could even take Druidic Warrior and pick up a couple of cantrips. But I've gone ahead and picked up Blind Fighting just in case. Uh, we can actually use this with our Darkness spell from Shadow Monk to see within the Magical Darkness, basically, within a range of 10 feet. So that's actually pretty darn useful. Uh, we also have the ability to use a Druidic spellcasting focus for our Ranger spells. Uh, we'll get to our spells in a moment. At third level, we get our Ranger Archetype, and we are taking Gloomstalker. This gives us a bunch of abilities as well. First off, we get an additional spell known. Uh, at third level, that's going to be Disguise Self. That could be pretty useful on a Stealth Infiltration. We also get the Dread Ambusher feature, which means we can give ourselves a bonus to initiative equal to our Wisdom. And at the start of our first turn of each combat, our walking speed increases by 10 feet, so that'll be 55 for us right now, It'll, and it lasts until the end of that turn. And if we take the attack action on that turn, we can make an additional weapon attack as part of that action. That really starts to scale really well for us, since we can also attack with our bonus action as a monk. And on top of that, the target takes an extra d8 damage of the weapon's damage type. We also get Umbral Sight, which gives us Dark Vision to a range of 60 feet. If we already have Dark Vision, its range increases by 30. We already have Dark Vision, so its range increases by 30. We are also adept at evading creatures that rely on Dark Vision. And while we are in darkness, we are invisible to any creature that relies on Dark Vision to see us. This is an amazing suite of abilities we already have, and we are already, here at level 9, the Master of Shadows. So for our ranger spells here at level 3, I've gone ahead and picked up Absorb Elements, Entangle, and Zephyr Strike. We also have Disguise Self from Gloomstalker, as well as the ability to cast Darkness, Dark Vision, Silence, and Pass Without Trace from Shadow Monk using Key Points. From there, we're going to briefly jump back to Monk, pick up level 7, in order to get Evasion. It's a very good skill and well worth dipping back into Monk to grab. And from here, for the next two levels, gonna grab Monk 8 for an ASI, we're gonna cap off our Dexterity, and then we're gonna grab Ranger 4 for another ASI, and start working on our Wisdom. And then moving on to level 5 of Ranger, that's gonna get us access to a second level spell, and I'm gonna grab Spike Growth. There's a bunch of different options here we could take, but I like Spike Growth because it's a pretty darn useful spell. We also would pick up extra attack here if we hadn't already gotten it from Monk, and that doesn't stack. Moving on to level 8 of Ranger now, we pick up a few things along the way. First we get Iron Mind, giving us proficiency in wisdom saving throws. That's pretty cool. We get the Landstride ability, which allows us to move through non-magical difficult terrain with no extra movement cost. And we have advantage on saving throws against magical plants, such as the Entangle spell. So that's pretty cool when it comes up. And at level 8, we get another ability score improvement, and we're going to go ahead and cap off our wisdom score here. That is going to bring our AC up to 20, which is obviously pretty cool. To cap off the build, we're going to take Ranger all the way to level 12. Along the way, we get Nature's Veil, which is another optional class feature, which replaces Hide in Plain Sight. This lets us use a bonus action to magically become invisible, along with anything we're wearing or carrying until the start of our next turn. At level 11 of Ranger, we get Stalker's Flurry, which, once on each of our turns, when we miss with a weapon attack, we can make another weapon attack as part of the same action. And considering we've got several ways to gain advantage, we are really good at hitting things now. And at level 12, as our capstone, I'm going to go ahead and take the Tough Feet. We've capped off our Dex and our Wisdom. You could take a different feat here if you want, but Tough is going to bring our HP almost up to 200, which, for something with 8 monk levels, isn't bad at all. As for our spells along the way, I've taken Summon Beast, Conjure Animals, and Daylight. Daylight is a bit of a fun one, just in case you ever need to turn the lights back on, even though we are the Master of Shadows. Sometimes, another creature might be hindering the party's ability to operate with too much darkness going on, and hey, the ability to turn it off and... Even the playing field that way, not a bad thing to have in your back pocket. So, as we look over our character sheet here at level 20, let's talk about how to play the build. Our main strategy is going to be the use of darkness to aid us. We can teleport through darkness up to 60 feet as a bonus action. 
we're invisible to creatures that rely on dark vision to see us. We can get advantage in several different ways, either through using Shadow Step, through Zephyr Strike, or simply through being unseen by our target. And with our bonus to initiative equal to our wisdom, we're usually going first. So the idea is to sneak up to something, use our abilities to stay hidden, gain advantage, and then blast them from the shadows before they even know it hit them. Then we simply repeat that process until everything we want dead is dead. We can further supplement our stealth with the Darkness, Silence, Path Without Trace spells, and we can utilize our bonus action in so many ways, either to attack with Flurry of Blows, to teleport with Shadow Staff, to activate Zephyr Strike, or to dodge with Step of the Wind in case we're fighting something that can still see us. But at the end of the day, we are an absolute cat ninja, darting through darkness at super speed and getting the drop on every encounter. So have fun with the build, and I'll see you next time.